Let's look at a proof that incorporates some aspects uh, that are pretty important for, for doing a careful proof. And it's also just a great little result. Uh, we want to show that for all real numbers, a, b, greater than zero, so we're not going to worry about things being integers or rationals here right now, um, that a plus b over 2 is greater than or equal to the square root of a, b. And this is called the am, gm inequality, because am is for arithmetic mean. That's just the ordinary average of two numbers, and uh, what we usually mean by the, the average or mean of two numbers. But then another way to get a number that's in between two numbers, and sometimes is a more appropriate thing, is known as the geometric mean. And it says to multiply the two numbers and take the square root. Um, there's lots of situations where that's relevant. It's geometric uh, because it does actually come up in um, when you look at triangles and right triangles and things like that, and you might well have seen that um, maybe as a part of the Pythagorean theorem, actually. Okay, so I claim that this is true, that these are two ways of getting a number between A and B, but this one always gives you something at least as big and often greater. So I don't want to just start out with the proof just bam, 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 because part of what's hard about coming up with proofs is you don't just always know exactly do this step, this do this step, do this step. There's a lot of some futzing, futzing around involved. And one thing you can do is you can kind of try to work backwards from the conclusion if you're trying to discover how to do the proof. And I want to make the distinction very much in this video between that and actually doing the proof backwards. Okay, so we're going to have our exploration stage. And I'm going to put question marks everywhere here to emphasize that I'm not starting with the proof. I'd say, well, what would it, what would a related idea be to this? Or what would a consequence be? And again, this would be exactly the wrong thing to do if I was starting the formal proof. I would be starting with the conclusion and working and essentially trying to prove the converse. But some some steps and some some pieces of logic are reversible. They some, sometimes go both ways. So it's not a horrible idea to start at the end and see what would happen if you work backwards. Okay, so I'm going to square both sides because square roots are weird. And a plus b over 2 all squared. Okay, if this were true, then this would be greater than or equal to ab. Okay, the square root's gone away. Okay, I don't like fractions either. And, well, let me just do it one step at a time. Okay, is that something that we could get to and maybe work backwards? Let's see. Let's put it up here. Um, okay, well, let's expand that out, the left-hand side. Okay, is that useful? Well, you know, there's a simple principle here, which is collect like terms. And um, often put, putting zero, getting everything on one side and putting zero on the other is not a bad principle. So we could say, hey, you know, if I subtract 4ab from both sides, that turns into a minus. And then there's a principle of look for patterns. Have you written something that can be written in a different way that you can recognize? So here we had some, some, an expansion step, and now it's really a recollect step to realize, hey, you know what, that is a minus b quantity squared. Hey, suddenly those question, those question marks don't have to be there. That is a certain fact, OK? I know I've written down a square of a real number. It can't be negative. OK, so we have a hint as to how to do it. We have not written down the proof by any means. But we have essentially written down a backwards version of the proof. Now we just have to figure out, can this be reversed? And you know what? There's no guarantee. Just because you've written something backwards and essentially sort of proved the converse um, or, or look at, you know, investigated kind of the, the consequences of the converse, um, that doesn't mean you're automatically going to be able to reverse it. But it's really not a bad way to start. OK, so we're going to start with this statement and then see if our steps can be reversed. Um, I'm going to need the room, so I'm just going to erase everything. Okay. So that was the exploration step. We went from something that was unfamiliar to something that was familiar, got some sort of anchor, and then we're hoping we can kind of turn that around. Okay. Okay, so, and then one thing I wanted to, to point out is that um, what we're trying to show is a for every. It's for every A and B real numbers. And so we have to almost always 
so many proofs start with the same word. They start with let. Let A and B be positive real numbers. If you want to show that something is true for all um, mystery quantities in some certain set, then you need to start, you need to name them. You're not saying that these are particular positive real numbers. The let really means these are going to be arbitrary positive real numbers, and we're going to sh work on them um, in a way that's true no matter what they are. So this is the first word of almost any proof that is proving a universal quantity, universal statement. And most interesting theorems have universals in them. Okay, so let A be positive real numbers. We know that A minus B squared is greater than or equal to zero. So that's something we're going to assume that's part of our foundations, that squares are non-negative. Okay, we're not going to make ourselves prove that. Okay, so now I'm going to rewrite that. And I have a, a great guideline um, based on that, that kind of backwards investigation that we had. Okay, so now I'm going to add 4AB to both sides. And this is the kind of thing that, uh, whoops, if I had just started this from here and going this way, you'd say, well, how did he know to start there? How did he come up with that? And that's why I wanted to show you the exploration step. Okay. Um, and then this guy collects. Okay. Now, one of the things that I'm not doing here is I'm not putting explicit connective words. I, if I wanted to be really careful, I would say, you know, then, or therefore, hence, and make sure that there's connectives. But the, the understanding about writing equations and, and proofs with equations in them is if you write a, a statement in the form of an equation or inequality, and then another statement and another statement, you're saying this is true, and that implies this, and that implies this, and that implies this. Okay, it's very different from writing something like one equation that takes multiple lines, like x equals 3y plus 1 equals 3y plus 7 minus 6 equals, that's really just writing one long chain of equalities, one statement. And so when you see the equals without anything balanced on it, that's really just continuing a chain of equalities. It's really one run-on sentence. This is a sentence, period, implied therefore, period, implied therefore, period, etc. So there's a bit of a, dis a distinction there. Okay, we're almost done. Now I'm going to square root both sides. Uh, ooh, uh, no, I'm going to divide by 4. Just kidding. Um, a plus b squared over 4 is greater than ab. And now I'm going to square root both sides. Ooh, I don't really need that. Um, is greater than or equal to the square root of ab. Now, that last step might be, hmm, do we really know that you can square root both sides of an inequality? Well, first of all, you're not going to be square rooting it unless everything's positive. So these, the issues about, like, would you have to switch the order of the inequality isn't going to come up. Um, but you might justifiably say, hey, I think that's a little bit more than what we want to assume is, is obvious. So let's, let's just prove that. Okay. So we're, we're done as long as we know that you can square root both sides of an inequality with positive numbers. So let's just prove that. I'll call it a lemma. That's a little mini theorem that you often need as a helper. Uh, if x is greater than or equal to y, um, and they're both positive, then the square root of x is greater than or equal to the square root of y. OK. And I'm going to prove that lemma. So this is still unfinished business for the original proof. Um, let's do it by contradiction. because I want to do something to those square roots, namely square them. By contradiction, assume square root x is less than square root y, and note both are positive, or else they, uh, yeah, they're both positive. We're just assuming everything's positive here. Okay. Then, uh, square root of x squared. What I am going to assume is that I know that I can multiply that inequality by itself, and everything's positive, nothing flips order, uh, and then, and I'll put in the connectives. So x less than y, and that's our contradiction. Okay. So that proves the lemma. Maybe I'll put a little triangle to indicate the proof of the lemma. Okay. And that um, fixes the gap 
in the main proof and so we're done all right little box the the triangle is a less common thing than the box but it's kind of a nice little symbol for hey here's a little sub proof that i'm finished with of a lemma and then i go back and fix finish off the main proof okay so things there don't be afraid to explore and write down rough draft stuff that can be kind of logically weird but then make sure you go back and say okay here's the real proof done in the right way um, the idea of let to start a proof by uh, a proof um, about universals and then hey good old contradiction came in again as well